Today we're gonna try to learn some famous noodle dishes around the world, as well as some of the recipes you sent me. Since we've already done ramen and pho, we're gonna skip those two. Starting with probably everybody's favorite noodle dish, carbonara. Why would I need the Italian pork jaw thing if I have bacon cured by radiation? Never judge bacon by its color, only judge it based on the content of its sodium level. Plus, as my stepdad already told you guys, more color, more. Flavor! This is when you want to start cooking your spaghetti. I always find it kind of insulting when YouTubers elaborate on the simplest cooking process. So to a pot of clean water you want to season with some salt, put on a lid till the water bubbles like that. It's called boiling. Then you can either break the pasta to fish for comments from Italians online, or you can just twist it in. Stir it a little bit to prevent sticking. Cook it for 8 minutes till al dente, which is a word I use to seem more cultured. Just when you're starting to think nothing about this dish is authentic, I whip out the Pecorino Romano. Are you proud of me? There's like a million carbonara recipes online, and I realize it all come down to 3 ingredients and a lot of techniques. Whisk the cheese and egg together, we'll add it to the pan later. It's gonna be the base for the sauce. And do Due to my personal record of making scrambled eggs every time I cook carbonara, I'm just gonna temper with the boiling pasta water to make my life easier. We'll toss it around, coating all the noodles in bacon fat. You also want to add some pasta water right now, so the starch helped to emulsify with the fat. I'm not sure why I didn't do it here. Now turn off the heat and mix in the cheese and egg mixture. You want to do it fast, or maybe in another container, because this is when the scrambling of eggs happens. And obviously more cheese and pepper, pepper, pepper. Maybe just don't show this video to your nana, because she deserves to be happy. Well, let's give it a taste and rate it 113. It's bacon and cheese, so I can't really complain. But I think I should have added more pasta water at the end when I added the sauce. But overall, the pecorino is really carrying the team. It's a lot sharper than parmesan, so it works well with the pork fat. I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. I said it before on here that Mexican's my favorite cuisine. What I really meant by that is I like when Americans mess up Mexican cuisine. We're gonna try to make the birria ramen thing. I always thought Tex-Mex is kind of crazy, but I guess LA is where all the food gets mushed up together. We've already made birria four times on this channel, but I just can't get enough. We'll start by deseeding 4 guajillo and 5 ancho. Just cut the tip of the chile and it'll release its seed all over the place. Now we'll take a tea bag and make a little spice sachet. A stick of cinnamon, a couple bay leaves, some coriander seeds I'm replacing with fennel seeds, whole black peppercorn, and some oregano. Since we're blending everything up together later, I'm just gonna leave the onions and garlic in huge chunks. Onto the protein, we're using oxtail again because it says Swift on it, and I'm a newly converted Swifty. <laughs> Tonight, we steal the moon! Some of the oxtail pieces are very huge because it's got all this fat on it. I'm going to trim it down a little. With a pan on high heat, we'll very quickly season the oxtail with pepper and salt. Decent amount of oil, we'll just drop it in. We'll flip around after about a minute or two to get it colored. I did it on high heat the whole time. Take them out once the sides are even. Look how much fat we render down. We can use the moisture from the onions to deglaze. Also some cumin and paprika in there. The edges of our aromatics starting to turn brown, so we're gonna add in a can of tomatoes. Poke it a little bit and then add in the main character. Premium high quality stock. Add back in the meat, and this is pretty much the second to last step of the dish. Put a lid on, simmer for 30. Oh, I also forgot to mention to add in the sachet. After 30 minutes, when the chiles are nice and soft, we'll take out the oxtail and start blending. It's not only going to blend up all the vegetables, it's also going to emulsify the fat on top. You'll see. I guess it's just a really spicy tomato soup at this point. We'll put the meat back in and brace for another two and a half hours. I actually braced it for three hours. Now the broth is back to being red instead of orange. At this point, it should be falling off the bones like this. And exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna save the bones in another bowl so I can suck on them later. Alright, I keep forgetting how much work birria is. Now that we have the meat and the broth, time to assemble everything together. This is gonna be the soup base of the noodles. I'm adding some water to the broth because unlike Instagram models, you don't want it to be too thick. As you Use this pack of fire noodles left over from the last video. Also the genius idea of putting half of the sauce packet. A good chunk of meat and boil together and let's see what happens. While it's cooking, we'll finally mince some white onion, cilantro, and I bet you missed this. The never ending rat clay. And the worst part about noodles is the splattering of the broth everywhere. And if you get beer on you, it's never coming off. That's why you need these aprons. You want the flavors in your mouth, not on your chest. Check out the link in the description. After a layer of onion, I'll put a slice of monster on it for the pull. 
top it off with cilantro and the dish is done i feel like we've done too many dishes that essentially is just instant ramen with cheese on top maybe it's time to cut back a little this just looks like the most satisfying bite ever let's give it a taste and rate 115 this is pretty much the um, best thing ever. The collagen from the oxtail made the broth really rich. And the flavors from ancho and guajillo is somehow enhanced by that packet of fire noodle sauce. The shredded oxtail is super tender and juicy. 9.5 out of 10. Whoever invented this was definitely high. <laughs> Now let's test out some of the recipes that you provided in the comments from the last video. First one's from Germany by Florian Klein. The recipe is called Nude Salad. Sounds like the morning routine of a middle-aged blonde lady in California. The recipe calls for the long horn noodles, but I'm gonna take it up a notch. We're gonna make a traditional spatzel, which is like a German couscous. I guess. I don't have milk, so I'm doing half heavy cream, half water. So just half a cup of milk, four eggs, two cups of flour, and a teaspoon of salt. Mix it to combine and wait for 20 minutes. Look how much it's pulling. It's almost like cheese. Now I'm gonna load up my spatzel maker. Are you surprised that I have it? I made it for the first time when I was 17 with my mom, and this is actually my second time making it. You can make it with a slotted spoon as well. We're just gonna slide it back and forth, and the droplet's gonna go directly into the boiling water. They're sort of uneven in size, but got a lot of texture. It's it's kind of like <clears throat> a particular type of cell in the male body. You don't want to slide too far or this might happen. They cook very quickly, so in about two to three minutes, we'll take it out and toss in some oil. There's no cooking instructions to this, so I'm just going to assume we're putting all these ingredients into a pan. 500 grams of noodles, 140 grams each of corn and peas. We're going to need a much bigger pan because it's about to get really weird. So 500 grams of yogurt and 300 grams of mayonnaise. This is only like 170 grams of mayonnaise. I think that's enough. Is the measurement wrong or am I just bad with the metric system? And the only seasonings we're putting in is garlic powder and paprika. This kind of looks like a fettuccine alfredo but in reverse every time we do a german recipe on this channel it's always covered in mayonnaise but we use i give a second chance to QP mayo so it's gonna taste pretty good the flavor is pretty much dominated by the yogurt and the mayonnaise, but the texture is quite interesting. The spatzel in there works really well with the vegetables and the sausage. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I think it'll be better cold. So the last recipe only has measurements of ingredients, but no instruction. And this recipe only has instructions, but no ingredients list. You guys are killing it out here. I hope you don't have attention to detail on your resume. All the way from Bulgaria, this is a chicken noodle soup for the soul. First, we're gonna get started with our aromatics, which are carrots, parsnip, potato, that's not an aromatic, and onions. Then we'll take a few pieces of chicken thighs and remove the skin. As I've told you guys before, to best enjoy any meat is to pull the skin back a little bit. Then we'll just drop the raw chicken and the vegetables into boiling water and just let it simmer for 30 minutes. I'm very appreciative of how easy this step is. No sweating this, no browning that. Just drop it all in. After the chicken's fully cooked, we'll take it out and start shredding it into smaller pieces. By shredding, I mean cutting. Now comes a very familiar step. Again, I'm gonna add a lot of yogurt to a bowl. Put in two egg yolks and mix it in. And then slowly whisk in a couple of ladles of the hot broth. We're gonna pour this into the pot later. This prevents it from scrambling. Both the chicken and the custard thing goes back in and bring it to a simmer. I guess Europeans just really love putting yogurt into noodle broth. Now that the soup is done, Vladimir, interesting name, said that if I'm feeling fancy, I can crisp up some chicken skin. Usually I feel more like a peasant, but let's be fancy today. I'm gonna sprinkle some salt on the skin and stick in the air fryer for 10. And look at this, kind of like a dog like a golden retriever. So everything to a bowl, crush up some crispy chicken skin, green bell pepper, and some parsley. Kinda looks Mexican. Let's mix it up together and give it a taste. Very pleasant acidity and creaminess from the yogurt. Bulgaria definitely has the most comforting chicken noodle. Wait, where's the noodle? I always wanted to make one of those curry udon things, but I don't have Japanese curry blocks at home, so I'm gonna make a buttered chicken and call it Indian. First, we're gonna start with some good looking chicken, dice it up, put it in a bowl, and start marinating. I'll never tell you what kind of chili powder this is, but this knob of ginger looks like a zombie. We'll grate it along with some garlic, mix it in, and let it marinate in the fridge for at least an hour. 
Since we've made butter chicken before and some of you are from India, I don't want to attract any hate. I'm just gonna speed through the rest of the process. After we deglaze with the onions, we'll add masala, turmeric, and cumin, and then some toasted cashew. Don't ask me why they look like walnuts. And a can of tomatoes. What is that? Heat it through, blend it up, put the chicken back in. Add cream, butter, and simmer for 20. We'll put a couple ladles of that into some cooked udon. I can already see the comment section of this video full of my angry Indian viewers. But after tasting it, it actually works really well. I think the gravy from butter chicken just works with every type of carb, you know? But garlic naan is still the best, though. Our next noodle dish are these black bean noodles. And at some point of your life, you're gonna have to hear the argument between your Chinese friend and your Korean friend over where black bean noodles originate from and i realized the perfect response to shut them up is does it even matter guys it could be from italy it doesn't change the fact that we're all losers here I've been dealing with pork belly quite a lot lately which i'm not complaining what are those red stuff on the skin a lot of the online recipes i saw use ground pork but we're gonna use the whole chunks of pork belly first we're gonna remove the skin there's not enough cooking time to completely break it down then we'll cut into half inch slices then again into half inch strips ideally you want to cut it into cubes but i'm too lazy to do that well Ideally, you want ground pork, so what do you want from me, man? We'll also grate up a knob of ginger, three cloves of garlic, mince half an onion, and cube up some soaked dry shiitake. On high heat, we're gonna stir fry half a bowl of water, and then drop in all of our cut up pork, same way we deal with bacon. Then we'll let the water carry out the fat and render for a long time, which basically means my apartment's gonna smell like boiled pork for the next two days. Once they're starting to look crispy, we can put in our aromatics. So we got ginger, garlic, and onion, stir fry a little bit. Add in the shiitake cubed up, stir fry some more. And then two sauces here. First one is the sweet soybean sauce, and the second one is also a black fermented soybean sauce, but like not sweet. I wonder if anybody ever tried to use miso to make this dish. Sounds like something Future Canoe would do. After incorporating everything, we're adding the soaking water from the mushrooms, and then dark soy sauce to make it even darker. And finally, a cup of milk. Just kidding, it's cornstarch water. This is gonna make it smoother, shinier, and just more put together overall. It's just like a self-help book for you. And finally, we're gonna cook these fresh alkaline noodles I got from the store. After cooking it though, we wanna run it through some cold water or ice to make the texture bouncier. You might be thinking, wow, these vegetables are perfectly cut. But I guess I cheated a little bit. Finally, the black bean pork belly sauce on top. It smells so good. And it looks really good, but at the same time, it looks so bad. You know what I'm saying? I've never made this myself before, I always just order it at restaurants. Black bean on noodles sounds kind of questionable, but it's one of those things that you just have to try it first. Now we gotta give it a mix. This is the annoying part. I don't like to work for my food. I like my food to work for me, you know? But it's whatever. Inconsistency makes things interesting, so I'm just gonna take a bite like this. On a rich in flavor scale, this is like a 9.8 out of 10. And the noodles are thick and chewy, perfect canvas for the pork fat and the black bean in the sauce. And after that bite I just took, I have sufficed all the sodium that I need for this year. My favorite one so far today. And by the way, I wanted to finish the video with a pad thai in the end. It was all going really well until I realized I forgot to add eggs. You're supposed to do it in the beginning, but I figured it shouldn't make a difference, right? So I added one towards the end. That's when everything started sticking and eventually it turned into this mush it's super slimy and wet and it smells like sulfur i was super disappointed because i went out and got tamarind and even foraged these peanuts from a couple bags of trail mix let's bring black the back bean noodles to end it on a good note i hope you enjoyed this episode i had a lot of fun learning about your cuisine we should do food around the world more often it's crazy to think about how we're all from different places in the world and in different stages of life but all share the love for noodles as if there are invisible strings that connect us all but if you take a closer look it's just spaghetti but anyways if you think of any other dish we should try leave a comment down below all right thank you